We're here with Dr. Mordecai Kedar, Lieutenant Colonel and Specialist in uh, Military Intelligence and Arab Affairs. Thank you for joining us today. Pleasure to be with you. You have a vast pedigree of uh, things that you specialize in, a lot of uh, experience that you have. Uh, please explain to our audience what you specialize in. Well, uh, I am specializing in the culture, mm -hmm. cultures in plural, of the Middle East. Um, you know, th these cultures of the Middle East are totally different from our modern Jewish or Christian, uh, European-like, American-like cultures uh, in many criteria. Uh, first of all, the structure of the society is different because we are individualistic societies, which everyone shapes his own life by his own abilities and hands while in the Arab world and in some parts of the Islamic world as well, like Afghanistan, Pakistan, the clan is the name of the social game. The second thing is the status of religion. Uh, in the West, unfortunately, a religion is in a decline. Too many people define themselves as atheists and the, the connection between man and God is in the deter deep deterioration uh, in both in Western Europe, in America, here in the Middle East, uh, this connection is becoming only more and more uh, uh, tight. Uh, Muslims, in most cases, are loyal to the religion. Yes, there are those who leave it, but they are not counted because they are not violent. Those who become more and more attached to the religion become, unfortunately, at least some of them, become more and more uh, violent. And this actually what we talk about uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all these organizations which are the organizations of those who are radicalized uh, by the religion. So when you see on one side of the world the de de decline of the commitment of the people to religion like what, as it is in the West while in the Islamic world people become more and more committed to Islam it is something which is not good for the Western societies because they actually lose their will to be right. And, and, and here you, you, you can see all kinds of, of uh, modern or postmodern uh, trends like everyone has his own narrative, everyone has his own title. There is not any more truth or, or, or lie. Yeah. It's, you have, and, and, and this actually, the, the fact that you are detaching, that people detach themselves from the truth with a big T. Mm -hmm. Now every lie can be a truth. It can be, it can be a truth. Yeah. And this is unfortunately part of the components of the Western culture of the recent, uh, let's say, two or three decades of political correctness and the woke, uh, which we see today. Uh, while in the East, uh, they become more and more powerful. Not only this, they invade the Western countries. Today in Europe, there are significant places with a migrant uh, 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 majority. Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, uh, many places which we thought that they are European, they are less than European every, every day. Because the, what happened, in Europe is a tragedy. First of all, two uh, 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 world wars cost the lives of like more than 70 million people, uh, in addition to the six million Jews. Yeah. But I'm talking about Russians, Germans, British, French, everybody, Polish, m many of them. And s imagine if these 72, 70 million would be alive, how many descendants they would have today. More or less something between 150 and 200 million people, Europeans. The, Europe would not need so many migrants to run the economy. Add to this the recent decades, which uh, under the disguise of uh, human rights and women's rights, to get married is only an option and to have children is a different option. Means uh, it, it leads actually to the sharp decline of fertility in the West. Today, the average 
the number of children per woman in Europe is 1.54, and in some cases in Scandinavia it's 1.2, in Russia it's 1. It's not sustainable. It means yeah. the next generation will be much smaller, and the next generation will be even smaller, and we're going to end up in like three generations where blonde people will be held like in a zoo. That yeah. people will come to see how once the human beings looked like. I, I'm serious. Yeah, I, I believe it. Yeah, we see it. And uh, on the other side of the world, they have children on right, left, and center. Mm -hmm. and, and today, migrants to Europe have average of, I think, uh, above four children per woman. Mm -hmm. And if you have two wives or three wives or four wives, as is permitted, in Islam, so you have like what, 20 children, you can live on social security, you don't need to work mm. because they get so much money from the state. So why bother working? So, and, and the whole Western system actually is a self-defeating mm. system because they cannot stand in front of the, the, the invasion. Now, today, large uh, parts of the economy are already taken by the migrants. Um, uh, taxi drivers, truck drivers, mm -hmm. and mine workers, uh, industry workers, uh, you know, black, uh, um, blue color, blue color, yeah. uh, blue color. Um, uh, people who sell in the grocery shops or, or vegetable sh shops. All these things are not anymore European. Europeans want to be lawyers, accountants, high tech workers. Mm -hmm. Uh, media workers and politicians. That's it. All the rest is being taken by migrants. So actually, these societies are dwindling. And uh, you know, there is a very important book, The Strange Death of Europe, uh, written by Douglas Murray, mm -hmm. uh, highly recommended to every American. Why? Because the Atlantic Ocean is not wide enough to keep America safe. Yes. From the same development, and what we see, what we see today, the the universities being taken by migrants, most of them from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. You can understand that uh, something uh, very bad uh, happens in America, and if America is not careful enough, America will look like Europe in ten or fifteen years from today. What's shocking to me, this is a systematic takeover. This was planned. Uh, in advance, I see, to uh, remove this Judeo-Christian culture and impose an Islamic culture like a caliphate. Why is this dangerous in, in light of Hamas's attack uh, on October 7th? Uh, in the West, we're told that they're freedom fighters, you know, uh, trying to defeat the evil enemy Israel who took their land. That's not really what this is about, is it? Hamas is a, the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm. The Muslim Brotherhood is a worldwide organization which was established almost 100 years ago in 1928 in Egypt. Uh, and the Muslim Brotherhood ideology, it actually stands on three pillars. One was, is to get, to get rid of the Western occupation. Because those years they had Britain in Egypt, they have France in Syria, they have Britain in what today Jordan is. And here uh, the Zionists are occupied. You know, it's, to get rid of the Western Christian uh, uh, or Jewish uh, uh, occupation because according to Islam, the, uh, Islam is superior to every other religion. Al, uh, in Arabic, it's uh, al Islam ya'alu wa la yu'al alayhi. Means Islam is superior and nothing can be above Islam. Uh, it reminds us about, you know, the song in, in German, Deutschland über alles. Mm -hmm. Deutsch, uh, uh, Germany is above all the others. Yeah. Uh, this was on those days. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Islam has the same, the same idea that Al Islam Yalu Wala Yu'ul Alayhi. The Islam is superior, nothing can be above Islam. And therefore, there could not be a situation that Christian is actually ruling Muslims, like as it was in Egypt, or French in Syria and Lebanon or British here, British in Jordan, because this is against the rules of physics hmm. if a Christian rules Muslims. So first of all, we have to get rid of the occupation. Hmm. Secondly, 
uh, the, the second pillar of the Muslim Brotherhood was to get rid of the Western culture which infiltrated into our societies, into the Islamic societies, like all kinds of ideas like democracy, like uh, uh, human rights, political freedoms. Right. What do you mean? Democracy, e equality, it's against Islam. Islam is above, every other th above everything. Um, uh, women's rights in Islam, unheard of. Hmm. Um, or at least according to uh, the Western yeah. concept of women's rights. Yeah. Um, 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 freedom of speech, can you speak against Islam? Not at all. Freedom of religion, freedom from religion, hmm. which parts of uh, the Western values or new values. In Islam, you cannot leave Islam. If you leave Islam, you will be, most probably will be slaughtered because this is the punishment of somebody who leaves uh, or denounces uh, Islam. So everything which comes from the West, um, either a form of government or human rights, women's rights especially, uh, is against Islam. So we have to get rid of this because it infiltrated our societies through the colonialism, uh, the British, the French and the others. So this is the second pillar, to get rid of the culture of the West which infiltrated and changed and damaged our societies, and especially when it comes to women and girls. Uh, the third pillar is to implement the Sharia law. We don't need any law coming from any other country. We have our own law, and this law should be implemented, and this is the Sharia, the Islamic Sharia. And these are the th three things. Now we have to start uh, working. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood is a whole array of how radical people are. There are those whose timetable is short and they want to achieve all these three pillars in a short time, so they will be more radicalized. They will come to fight against the British or the Israelis or the French or all the others who invaded their own countries in order to get them. And they will punish severely every, everybody who tries to sell or to promote Western ideas in our societies like freedom, women, all these things. And of course, we will implement the Sharia as fast as we can. And these are the radical Muslim Brotherhood, uh, uh, like Hamas, like, Hamas, yes. like Al Qaeda, like ISIS, mm -hmm. because they are the sons or the grandson of this idea. While there are others who are, let's say, moderate. Let's do it by, by convincing people, like talking to people. Let, let's let's be nice. If we are nice and we cater for them and we take care of their agonies, of their health issues, of their or, or the uh, income issues. We'll help them and they will follow us. And there are also, also a, a Muslim Brotherhood people who think in this way. They are l less radical because they have the time, they have the patience, and they are more, more willing to work on it and uh, to convince people in a good way or a peaceful way how to come to Islam. And these are actually the array of the ideas inside the Muslim Brotherhood home. And uh, okay, the problem is that the Right, the, vi the violent ones, the radical ones, can impose their agenda on the non-violent ones. While the non-violent cannot impose because they are not violent. <laughs> By definition. Obviously, right. yes. And you know, in every encounter between a violent side and a non-violent side, the violent side will prevail. Yes. And succeed to convince the non-violent. Mm -hmm. So this is why the non-violent Muslims, and there are, like the Sufis and others, yeah. uh, 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 they, uh, they are not violent. And therefore they are, they are almost insignificant hmm. because they don't count votes, they impose. <laughs> okay, so this is the problem of uh, the radical Islam, which damages Muslims more, uh, 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 even before it dam damages the others. Hmm. Uh, because they define between the, the closer enemy and the more remote enemy. Mm. The closer enemy is the Muslim who doesn't follow our way of thinking on behavior, while the Jew or the Christian is the further enemy. So we have to get, take care of the closer one first. Mm. But regardless, either party is still an enemy because one of the mm. things that the uh, Western perspective is, is that, well, it's only the radical uh, Islam that has this viewpoint and everyone else doesn't view that way, but you're saying it's just a different times table for where it's going to happen. First of all, different timetable. Secondly, 
the non-violent are almost without, without any meaning. Right. Because what can they do against the violent? They, cannot, they can do nothing. Right. Their voice doesn't count. And they don't do because if they do, they endanger their own life. Yeah. So then within this, October 7th, what was the true point behind that as far as Hamas was concerned? Well, October 7th is something I would say rather complicated. Uh, Hamas were armed by Iran. Hamas were equipped by Iran. Hamas were trained by Iran, sponsored by Iran and Iran, Iran friend Qatar. And, and Hamas should have been a part of something totally different. Uh, I got the information la April of 2023, like a year and a month ago. I have a, a good friend who is a refugee from Iraq, a Christian Arab from Iraq who lives in Europe. And he is in connection with anti-Iranian activists in Iraq. And once in a while he sends me all kinds of inf information about the, the Iranian militias in Iraq. Uh, what they do, what they prepare, and I usually send it to the intelligence here, and they do with this whatever they do, I, I have no idea why. In the beginning of April of 2023, a year and a month ago, more or less, uh, he sent me a whole story about an order which uh, came from Iran to the 50, 50 uh, militias, pro-Iranian pro militias, which they have in Iraq only, Ordering, ordering them to start getting prepared to a war against Israel, which will be carried out by launching missiles, uh, drones, and by uh, incursion on the ground from the Golan, from Syria, to get prepared what they need, and to wait until the Iranian order to start the war. The same order was given to the 17 uh, militias, Iranian militias in Syria. Mm. The same to Hezbollah mm. in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, and uh, Hamas and the Islamic Jihad in Gaza as well. Wow. They were all supposed to start an all-out war against Israel in one minute, in one second, when they get the order from Iran. According to the Iranian diabolic plan, Israel would collapse within two to five days because Israel would be under a barrage of missiles coming from all the directions, barrage of drones coming from all the directions, and incursion on the ground, as we saw in the south, also from the north, um, occupying the five towns in the, in the north, which is next to the border, Kiryat Shmona, Rosh Pina, Ma'alot, Shlomi, and Naharia, mm. and all the kibbutzim and the moshavim in between, yeah. uh, capturing thousands of people, killing thousands of people, because only in the north we had in this area uh, like uh, 80,000 people. So imagine how many victims would have been there. Uh, in, in, in Gaza it was like one of ten of this. And uh, um, all uh, Israel air bases, um, facilities of electricity, water supply, roads, communications, the, the uh, facilities in the sea, of the, ga the gas facilities in the sea, everything will be bombarded by those missiles uh, and Israel will exhaust its uh, uh, iron dome within a day, the arrow in another day, and Israel will remain exposed after two or three days. The Americans are still asleep in Virginia, mm -hmm. and the Europeans are still in, uh, where they are. Israel is being wiped off the map. This was the, the, the Iranian plan. Hamas should not have started a war by themselves. They, they jumped the gun. They went before the plan. Uh, Iran's, Iran's plan was uh, planned to, uh, to be carried out only after Iran owns a nuclear weapon in order to deter any retaliation, to deter Israel from retaliation. From retaliation. Hamas had different timetable because along 2023, 
there were talks between Israel and Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. about normalizing the relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Why, why is this so important? Unlike the Emirates, Bahrain and Morocco, which are the countries of the Abraham Accords of 2020, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is a leading country. They lead the remnants of the Arab world, like Algeria, Tunisia, and more important, the Islamic world. Maybe not including Iran, but definitely Indonesia, yes. Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, all these Central Asian uh, uh, republics, Mauritania in Africa, Niger, Chad, Mali, all these Islamic countries, which will be encouraged, of course, by the American administration to normalize relations with Israel after Saudi Arabia have done it. And from Hamas point of view, the Palestinian causes will be dead. If most of the Islamic world is in such good relations with Israel, who, who in the world will care about the Palestinian issue? Uh, killing uh, 1,200 Israelis in one day and uh, butchering, uh, raping and all these things, all these atrocities, uh, was uh, way uh, above uh, the Israeli ability to tolerate, to, to tolerate and to absorb. And uh, Israel went to an all-out war unlike what they expected. Mm. And uh, now they have to face the consequences of what they did. And Israel is determined to get rid of their military abilities and their government, and actually to get rid of Hamas from, from Gaza. Uh, we expected the world to be more sympathetic with this. Uh, but I must say that the Biden administration at the beginning were wholeheartedly with us. We, we still remember the don't, which uh, Biden said to both to Hezbollah and to uh, Iran, who, by the way, were surprised by, by the action of Hamas. Mm. But this is why, by the way, until this very day, they did not get to an all-out war against Israel because this, it doesn't work according to their timetable. Okay. Uh, what uh, what uh, Hezbollah has with us is border clashes plus, maybe plus plus, yeah. but not more than border clashes. Not the real thing, border. yeah. They don't shoot on Tel Aviv, they don't shoot on Haifa, they don't, you know, target strategic uh, targets here in Israel. Mm. Now, all they do, they, they, they shoot on the, on the border and maybe beyond the border a little bit. Because they don't want now an all-out war because Iran has not yet achieved nuclear weapon. Wow. So, with the recent retaliation, uh, the, the 200 plus, almost 300 uh, drones and missiles on uh, April 14th that mm -hmm. Iran fired into Israel, I saw that as a prime opportunity for Israel to finally respond and take out those nuclear installations, but they did it. Well, uh, it was, there was an American veto. Because the Americans said, look, uh, uh, what you, Israel, did uh, earlier, uh, two weeks earlier, you actually succeeded to get rid of the commander of the Quds Force in Syria and, and uh, Lebanon, Zahidi, mm. which was a big blow to the Iranians, a uh, little bit less than Soleimani, oh, really? because he was the one level below Soleimani. Yeah. So since everybody understands the big hit which they got from the Americans in 2020, January, 2020, when America got rid of Soleimani, mm -hmm. Israel got rid of Soleimani's deputy, uh, the one after yeah. uh, uh, Soleimani in, 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 the, in the rank. Uh, uh, and, and this was a good success. Now, you succeeded also in the, in, in the defense. In the offense against this man, you succeeded. In the defense, you succeeded to stop this uh, barrage of missiles and drones and everything. So what do you want more? Wow. So don't... Not to be annihilated. <laughs> okay. No, no. From the American point of view, you hit them, they try to hit you back and they fade. So don't accelerate this, this clash, uh, the, the exchange of clashes, because for the Americans, they do not want to have now issues with the Iranians. Mm -hmm. They want to tame the Iranians, they want to 
to have the Iranians act like normal state. They still believe in it. This the same mindset of the JCPOA of 2015. And in my humble view, uh, uh, I'm afraid that uh, uh, Barack Obama is still controlling many things. Mm -hmm. And he still believes that Iran could be convinced to behave like a normal state, although this is against the DNA of the Iranian Shia. So, but uh, he doesn't get it. Neither he nor Biden, who was his deputy, yeah. or he was vice, vice president in those days. So, uh, this is actually uh, what happened here. And uh, look, I'm not in a situation to thank Hamas for what they did, right. but they actually destroyed the, wow. the big diabolic satanic mm -hmm. uh, plan of the Iranians. Because now Israel, is, uh, uh, Israel understands it. By the way, I published this in April when I got this really? information. I published it be, 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 because I, I also gave it to the army. But this information doesn't concern only, only the army. It also connected to the electricity uh, uh, grid, works, to the grid, to the water supply, yeah. to the emergency uh, services here in Israel, uh, municipalities, actually everyone wants to know that there is a plan to get rid of us all. So it's not only in the army. Secondly, uh, this is not something which is uh, out of history because the independence war in 1948 was multi-front war. We had it from Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon as well. Right. With, with forces which came from, from Iraq, from Saudi Arabia, from Libya. And the Six Day War in 1967 was also three fronts. Yeah. Egypt, Jordan, and uh, Syria. The Yom Kippur War, 1973, was two fronts. Uh, Syria and Egypt. So. The fact that here we have five fronts is not something which is totally out of context. Mm -hmm. So there is no, it's not a secret. Secondly, if people talk about this in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Gaza, shouldn't we Israelis know about this? So I published the whole, uh, the whole plan of the Iranians. Mm -hmm. It was published on, on April 9 of 2023, within one day. I saw it in English, people translated it. Yeah. I saw it in French, I saw it in Arabic. Wow. And five days later, on uh, uh, April 14, Yechia Sinwar is uh, giving a, a sermon or a speech in Gaza, and he recommends everybody to read Mordechai Kedar's article. Oh. That's amazing. So what, so what do you see is uh, Iran's master plan is, is no. sabotaged by Hamas's greed. Um, what, do, what do we need to look for next with mm. Iran's plan and what they do to pivot from this? How should we be preparing and be aware? Well, uh, although the component of surprise doesn't exist anymore because first of all, Israel took out uh, like 80,000 of the Israelis who live next to the northern border. So they cannot catch them, capture them. Mm or kill them, okay? Secondly, half of the Israeli army is in the north, ready to face Hezbollah. So now it's a very bad time to invade Israel by, by Hezbollah, it's not a good time. And Israel is aware of it. And don't forget that for like almost two months, we had here in the sea a whole fleet headed by the uh, Ford uh, air aircraft carrier yeah. with a whole uh, entourage yeah. of yeah of uh, our fleet of uh, ships with weapons, with uh, ammunition, with bombs, with everything they needed. In order, and they, only this fleet could, as much as I assumption, uh, I assume that they could flatten Iran if they wanted. Or maybe Lebanon as well. Yeah. So, uh, th and this was totally not according to the Iranian plan. <laughs> Definitely was not uh, planned by Iran. So actually what happened with uh, Hamas, Hamas actually destroyed. The, the, the Iranian plan. I, I will thank them because when they burn p kids and decapitate uh, children and, uh, and, and rape women and kill so many people in such a barbaric, satanic way, I'm the last man on earth to thank them. But definitely they destroyed the Iranian 
the Iranian uh, plan. Uh, but look, although they did it, the intention of the Iranians and all their proxies to destroy Israel didn't vanish, mm -hmm. didn't go anywhere. They might postpone it uh, for a while until Israel falls asleep on God, as it did on October 7th, and they will assume it. It could be now, it could, uh, it could be in a year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, who cares? The, there is a verse in the Quran which says, in Allah ma sabirin. Allah is with those who have patience. Mm. And they have a lot of patience. We Westerners, we, our, our clock is very short, you know. Yeah. We want everything instant. Yes. Instant coffee, yeah. uh, for example. Here in the Middle East, they don't know what instant coffee is. Yeah. They have only real coffee which they broil and wait until it uh, bruises and you know, everything. Yeah. Because it's a whole ceremony and you need patience. Wait until it boils, wait until... Uh, this. It's not like the instant uh, a, a culture as which, which we have. Yeah. Here the timetable is totally different. The, but now you've sounded the alarm. The Israeli government knows, the intelligence knows. What do you feel is going to be Israel's next step in dealing with the Iranian threat? I have no idea. You have no idea? <laughs> I have no idea, because first of all, Israel is not alone in this. Yes. Iran threatens not only Israel, the Iranian missiles can reach London and beyond. Mm -hmm. And uh, Iran is actually a danger to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, they know how to launch uh, missiles from submarines. Mm. So imagine like a submarine which shows up somewhere in the Atlantic and reaches us, and the reaches Americans. wherever they like, or New Australia, or wherever. Okay, so they, they, they can do whatever they like. And uh, don't forget that they think, that they believe, that they are directed by Allah. That uh, according to the Shia, the leaders of the Shia are, as they say in Arabic, masumin, infallible. Hmm. They cannot make any mistake. They're like the Pope <laughs> to them. <laughs> Even more than the Pope, That's they are connected directly, directly to Allah. And uh, therefore, if they decide to develop nuclear weapons and maybe to use them as well, this is a divine decision. It's not their decision. They get it from, from His Majesty. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and, this, and, and this is how they think. Nuclear weapons, in the hands of these people is very dangerous, very dangerous, because at any given moment they can decide that Allah gives them the order to use it. And who are the swine eaters and the wine drinkers uh, to tell them what to do and what not to do? They look at all the others from high and above. The Jews are defiled, while Christians as well, yeah. and they drink and they eat whatever they eat, so who cares about them? Who gave them the permission to talk to us, Muslims, believers? This is how they look at it. This is why negotiations with them is futile. Yeah. No, without any, any meaning. And the only thing which works with the Iranians is credible threat. Sure. Not a threat, because if don't believe you, it's not a threat. Credible. Only credible threat. A threat which they believe that you will do to them what you, what yes. you threaten them. <clears throat> and there are three, I would say, proofs to this. First of all, as you might remember, when they took over Iran in 1979, February, they bursted into the American embassy and they caught 52 diplomats. Um, more, maybe some of them were intelligence uh, yeah. personnel. Now, diplomat, but still they were immune by the diplomatic immunity. A diplomat you cannot catch. You cannot, you can maximum, you can tell him to leave their country because he is a persona non grata, mm -hmm. you know, undesirable yeah. uh, person. So you can give him 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours to leave the country and that's what, what happens. They caught these people these American diplomats, and they held them 
444 days. Against the international law, against everything. When did they release them? In the minute which Ronald Reagan, but this whole thing happened when Jimmy Carter was the president. But Ronald Reagan replaced him when he stood on the lawn of the White House, uh, pledging allegiance to the Constitution as a, a president who comes to office. Yeah. Why? They released them. The same minute, the airplane which carried these 52 uh, men left the Iranian airspace. Why? Because along his uh, campaign, Reagan, he said that the first, time, the, th the first thing which he is going to do when he steps into the White House as a president mm -hmm. will be to take care of the Iranians. Mm -hmm. Now, he was, you know, an actor. Right. And <laughs> you had to deliver uh, when line. he <laughs> says, I'm going to take care of them. Do you believe it? <laughs> uh, you know, with all the gestures yeah. of how in the Westerners, uh, in the Westerns, yeah. you take care of somebody. They understood that this taking care will not be nice. Yeah. So th this was a credible threat. So they released the 52 diplomats without anything, no money, no, no releasing of anybody. They just got rid of them because before <laughs> the president takes care of them. Yeah. Okay, and this is what, what we say in political science, um, uh, uh, credible threat. The second was in the, the end of the war between Iran and Iraq. This war erupted in 1980 and continued eight years until 1988. It finished not because the Iranians were defeated, but because the United States, by mistake, knocked down an airliner, an Iranian airliner above the Gulf, causing the death of, by mistake, hmm. uh, uh, of like 200 people, uh, the passengers and the crew. The Iranians suspected that this was intended. And if America comes into the war with Iraq, this is something which Iran cannot uh, face. So they raised the white, white flag. Although it was a mistake. A mistake. Yep. But they view it, viewed it as a, a, a threat of America to become part of the coalition against Iran, so they give up. This second proof. The third proof was in 2003, the invasion against uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, the revenge of Iraq, by the Americans and the Europeans and many others. The Americans said that they will be finished by June. Right. By, they thought that the three months will be enough in order to rebuild Iraq as a democracy. I already told them that this is nonsense. They, it cannot be. It may be, uh, uh, you know, could be 30 years, but not uh, three months. But uh, they thought, and they were talking about continuing the war in June, maybe on Iraq, on Syria, on both. Or not. This was a discussion. I said, I took part in these discussions, so I know. So uh, Iran halted its nuclear weapon uh, uh, program immediately mm -hmm. because they were afraid that they will be targeted with the, with the next uh, target of Iran, of, of the United America. States, after, after Iraq. And, but they started the insurgency in Iran. They helped it, they supported it, they trained the people, and they armed them, and they equipped them, and they actually sponsored this. And America had all the evidence needed in order to blame Iran for the participation in the insurgency. It, lacked, it took three years. America did nothing against Iran, although the American intelligence had all the information, all the information uh, about Iran participation in the insurgency, and they did nothing. So they understood that America more or less becoming a paper tiger. Mm -hmm. So they resumed their nuclear program in 2006, after holding it for three years. So this is what shows you that when they are afraid that, that the, they will stand the, the world will do something against them, they are, they are deterred. What do I say? In order to, for them to get, in order for the world to get rid of the Iranian nuclear weapons, the world leadership, headed by the American president, should have sent them a letter saying this. Dear Iranians, or Khamenei, your 
time is over and your game is over, we don't believe every one word that you say, you have one week exactly to get rid of all the facilities, all everything from the uranium and the enrichment, whatever you have, everything which you have about this nuclear program, you have one week exactly to ship it to us on ships. If you fail to do it within one week, we are going to flatten you with the earth and we are around you and we are already warming the engines. Don't call us, we will not call you. And read our lips, we mean business. We say what we mean and we mean what we say. You're finished in one week. Now, the more credible this threat is, yeah. the less is the chance that you have to use it. Right. Dr. Kadar. Because they will understand this is the end of them. That, that just blew my mind. This has been so light, enlightening. We've run out of time, but I, I appreciate this wisdom that you have given us and the stories and the insight uh, and the intelligence. I believe it's going to change a lot of people's perspectives in America. Thank you so much, sir. Pleasure to be here.